going to have a look at performing a ZE test or an earth fault loop impedance test on this three phase board here. Uh, first of all, why do we do ZE or earth fault loop impedance? And that's to check that we have actually got earth continuity. Uh, have we got an earth? And also that it's below uh, a defined value, which for a, a TNCS should be 0 0.35. And if it was a TNS, then that would be 0 0.8. And, um, I'm going to follow on by doing the uh, prospective fault current. And the reason why we do that particular test is to make sure that these breakers here can actually make or break a current under the most onerous circumstances. And uh, so we need to test that at every relevant point on the installation, generally the origin, but that actually means any point in the installation where an overcurrent protective device needs to operate under fault conditions. So I need to be aware that um, I'm working live. I must maintain the isolation. I have actually removed the padlock, and uh, it is under my supervision, so I'm happy that I'm working safely here, but the padlock could get in the way there. And uh, we must also be aware that we are live testing, so we do need to make sure that our leads or probes are compliant with GS38. The meter is in good condition and it's calibrated. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the incoming earth, the, the earth that on this particular rig comes from outside and joins to the MET. So it's no good taking off this earth because obviously I will be reading or possibly including some of the parallel parts. So if I take this out here, that will now isolate the earth and it'll remove the parallel paths and also if there is any issue with continuity in this conductor then we'll pick it up at this particular stage. So I'll crock on to the earth that I've removed. I can crock on to the neutral and on three phase I do three readings and just simply take the highest. So I have to wait for the meter to give me the go ahead. Uh, that basically tells me when I've got good connection and voltage, so I can now push the button. So I've got a reading of 0 0.42 there, which is a little too high for a PME reading or a TNCS reading, which should be 0 0.35. It would be okay if it was a TNS, but uh, I know that in this building uh, we are reading actually via the wiring in the building as well, so I can accept it under this particular case. I'm now measuring L2, 0.43, and L3, 0.3. I'm measuring also 0.43. So what we like to do here at PTT is to put the earth back in as soon as possible and I can then record the result at my leisure. So 0.43 is the highest and that is my, my ZE for this particular installation. Notice here that I will still be getting a current reading because at the end of the day the meter is only doing Ohm's law. But I actually ignore it at this stage because I haven't got any of the parallel paths uh, included in the, uh, in the reading. So 0.43 was my ZE for the system. <clears throat> so I'm now going to do the respective fault current and on three phase uh, we've got to be aware that we are talking about 400 volts. I haven't actually got a capped 4 meter here so I'm actually going to have to measure between neutral and L1, L2 and L3 consecutively. And also I'm not going to do a prospective earth fault current because 230 volts can never really compete with 400 so there's not much point in measuring the prospective earth fault current because we know it's going to be less. So what I'm actually going to do <coughs> is take the highest reading and then just simply double it. And you may wonder why we double it. And that's because it's actually being measured single phase because I haven't got a cap 4 meter. Uh, technically speaking, we would normally multiply it by 1.732, which is the square root of 3. But the regs actually say that it's simpler just to double it and it will err on the side of caution anyway. So to take the test, I can now crock onto the earth bar because I now want to include the parallel paths because if they lower the resistance the current could increase and I need to make sure that current 
isn't more than these breakers can handle. So you'll notice that we still will get an impedance reading. At this time, I'm not interested in the impedance. I'm only interested in the current. That's 487 amps, or 0.487 kiloamps. That's 428 amps, or 0.428 kiloamps. And that comes out at uh, 450 amps, or 0.415 kiloamps. So I simply just take the highest finger and double it. And that's what I would record as the respective fault current for this circuit. 